the beliefs that are holding her back are the beliefs that you've inculcated from outside authorities in many cases <clears throat> or beliefs in yourself when you're not living congruently and doubting yourself and not walking your talk. This topic today is are your beliefs holding you back? Are your beliefs holding you back in life? Now, I think that most people have had a situation in their life where they've run into individuals that they hear themselves saying, well, I can't do that because of this. I can't do that because, well, if I do that, this will happen. And they've got assortment of inculcated ideas or beliefs that have, in a sense, curtailed them from taking action. So if you're taking notes and want to write something, the first thing you may want to write is that every decision that you make, primarily from your amygdala's uh, valence adding judgments, but every decision you make is based on what you believe at that moment will give you most advantage over disadvantage, most reward over risk, most positives over negatives, you might say. <clears throat> and even though life has a balance of those, we still have a kind of an interpretation that allows us to go and try to get the advantage over disadvantage. When we get there, we think, okay, well, when we get there, we find new discovery downsides. And sometimes the things we thought we wanted to avoid, we found upsides too. But at that moment, based on the data that you've got in your awareness, you're making a decision to try to get more advantage or disadvantage. This is what the amygdala does. It wants to avoid predator and seek prey. So our decisions are partly amygdala based. Now, there's also above the amygdala, which is subcortical, a cortical area of the brain, the medial prefrontal cortex, which calms down the impulses and instincts, the seekings and avoidings, the skewed subjective biases that the amygdala imposes and tries to get it more centered so you can spontaneously act on things instead of reacting to the awareness of the environment that you're having. In other words, an inspired mission instead of an emotional reaction. Whenever you are living by your very highest values and living congruently and integrally with what you really feel your identity revolves around, your mission for life, the thing that you feel is your calling, if you will, and you're letting go of the lower party things or delegating those to other people and just sticking to the thing that's most meaningful. You spontaneously act. It's not even a decision. It's not an avoidance or seeking mechanism. It's not extrinsically run. It's a spontaneous action from within. In the brain, it's called a spontaneous potential versus an evoked potential from stimuli outside, which are conditioned. But whenever we're doing something that's high in our values, that we're really engaged in, that we're really inspired by, that we feel fulfilled by, that's really meaningful to us, that we spontaneously take action on, this is where we excel. This is where we achieve. Whenever we do, we start to accumulate a belief that what we say we're going to do, we're going to do. We're disciplined, reliable, and focused in this area. <clears throat> and we tend to walk our talk, not limp our life. And so our belief in ourself goes up. When we say we're going to do something, we do it. As we, I said, we walk our talk. But the second we do something that's lower on our values or attempt to do that, we attempt to procrastinate, hesitate, and frustrate. And we tend to um, start to limp our life instead of walk our talk. We tend not to do what we say we're going to do. Uh, you know, my highest value is teaching, researching, and writing. I pretty well do that every day. I don't need to be reminded to do that. Nobody has to motivate me to do that. I love doing that. But when it comes to cooking and driving, I would need somebody to motivate me to do that. And so if I said to you, I'm going to cook and I'm going to do this, or I'm going to drive this car, I'll probably let myself down and won't do it because I delegate that. And my belief in myself in that area goes down. Anytime you set an objective, a goal that is not aligned and congruent with your highest value, <clears throat> you automatically start having self-depreciating thoughts and your belief in yourself goes down. And you make decisions by offloading them onto other authorities. 
So whenever you're living by lower values, not highest value, you tend to be uncertain, doubtful, and you start to take and inject the values of others that you think are more successful or more achieving in those areas, and you subordinate to them, you inject the values in them, and you take on what is some people have called limiting beliefs. Why they're limiting is because you've taken on a belief that doesn't match your own highest value, and you start to think, I need to be doing what, that's, what that or that is, and expecting yourself to do something you don't get around to do. And so you start doubting yourself, and therefore those beliefs are holding you back. I've had some people say, well, no matter what I do, I can't seem to get ahead financially, but I know I should be saving more. <clears throat> I shouldn't be spending as much. Anytime you hear yourself saying, I should, I ought to, supposed to, I got to, I have to, I must, I need to, you can guarantee those are injected values of outer authorities that you subordinated to because you're living by lower values and your brain offloading and giving them the power to inject those and you're trying to envy somebody else and imitate somebody else and trying to be somebody you're not and losing your identity and your brain doesn't want you to lose your identity. So it'll create symptoms of self depreciation and these quote limited beliefs to make you feel like you're sabotaging and not achieving something in order to get you back to your highest value, whereas you're authentic and you're inspired again spontaneously, where you just don't have to even motivate yourself to do it. I don't need motivation to teach, but I would need motivation to cook or drive. I just don't do it. Anything I require motivation to, I delegate to other people and find somebody that would love to do that so they can do what they love while I get to do what I love. That's a life of inspiration, not a life of weighed down desperation. So are your beliefs holding you back? Yes. Now what's interesting, or may, maybe in this case, if you're, if you're trying to live by somebody else's beliefs, but what's interesting is, is people will say to me, I want to save money. I want to get ahead. I want to be financially independent. And then they go back and they're buying immediate gratifying consumables that depreciate in value and they never buy something that goes up in value that gives them passive income to be able to build wealth, financial independence. So what they say and what they're actually doing are two different things. That's why I have on my website the value determination process to try to get people to go there and take the time to answer 13 simple questions to help discern what really is valuable to you. So the highest probability of setting real goals that are really objectives that are spontaneously act upon that you're disciplined, reliable and focused on. So you don't end up having the beliefs that you think are holding you back. The beliefs that are holding your back are the beliefs that you've inculcated from outside authorities in many cases, <clears throat> or beliefs in yourself when you're not living congruently and doubting yourself and not walking your talk. And those beliefs sometimes called limited beliefs, if you want to use those terms, uh, do hold you back, but they're designed to hold you back. They're designed to hold you um, from doing something that's not truly authentic to you, to frustrate you enough, to self depreciate you enough to get you back on track with what is really important. That's one of the reasons I in the breakthrough experience program, the, the program that I teach almost every week or two uh, is designed to assist people in knowing what their values are, the highest values, and to start organizing and structuring their life functionally around what is important to them. Their self-confidence goes up, their accomplishments go up, their, their leadership skills go up, their space and time horizons expand. They give themselves permission to do something more extraordinary. They start having more of a legacy focus and a long-term vision focus instead of immediate gratification. Anytime you're trying to live in other people's values, you're going to end up failing futility. And then your belief in yourself is going to go down. And then you're going to have this so-called belief that, you know, why can't I get ahead financially? If you don't really have a wealth building financial goal or a, a real high value on finances and wealth building, you won't. <laughs> when the why is big enough, the house take care of themselves. <clears throat> if you have a big enough reason for doing something, you'll do it. Something that's high in your value gives you a big enough reason for doing it. And you don't let obstacles interfere with you. You stay focused on it spontaneously. But anytime you're trying to live in somebody else's values or try to go into lower values in your own hierarchy of values, you're going to automatically have belief systems that are going to come in that goes, I, I don't do what I say. I can't seem to get and stay focused. I can't be disciplined. In the 1980s, when I was lecturing all over America, I noticed when I asked people, what is the most common question you have? Write it down. What's the common question for the seminar? I go speak at a seminar and <clears throat> 
I had everybody write down the number one question I got. I was amazed. I, I didn't expect it, but the number one question I got from people in the 80s was, how do I stay focused? If you have to ask, how do I stay focused? That means you're not living by what is most important to you. That's why in the Breaks Experience, we go and identify what that highest value is. And that's why I have it on my website, the value determination process to help you de de determine that. Please take advantage of that. It's complimentary on the website. <clears throat> but actually answer the questions on the website as integrally as possible. Don't lie to yourself and don't write down what you think the answer should be or supposed to be. You won't be honest. Write down what your life demonstrates. If you had a drone looking over you and looking down on your life and how does your, what is your life demonstrating? Your life demonstrates what you value most. And anytime you set a goal that's not matching what you really value most, you're designed to self-depreciate and create, quote, beliefs that hold you back because you're being held back from something that's not true for you. That's why when people, if they don't really have a value on wealth building and financial, you know, mastery, if it's not really in their top three or four values, you won't get around to doing it. If you have something higher on value, your children's health, you're going to, instead of spending money on investments, you're going to spend your money on your kid's health. If you have a higher value on clothes and shopping, um, then you're going to take your money. And instead of putting it in investments, you're going to put it into clothes. And then you're, but you're going to have this thought that, oh, I keep sabotaging. Why did I can't get ahead? Because I, I, I should be saving because that's an injected value by some outside authority that you admired because they had wealth or the same thing. And it could be not money. It could be relationship. You think I should be dating or, or married by now. You know, what's wrong with me? Why am I keep not doing that? But what you do is you have your own hierarchy of values and your own hierarchy of values is determining how you perceive, decide and act. And you're actually acting according to your values many times, but you're trying to live in other people's. You're acting according to do, but you're trying to live in others. Therefore, when you do what you do according to your own values, but you're expecting it to be in their value, you beat yourself up and you think I should be doing this. I ought to be doing something else than what I'm doing. But your life is demonstrating your values. And so you're doing what's really valuable to you, but you're not appreciating and honoring it because you're comparing it to somebody else. That's why Ralph Waldo Emerson said envy is ignorance and imitation is suicide. We're not here to envy somebody else. We're not here to put people on pedestals, We're here to put them in a heart. <clears throat> so when I go and do the Demartini method um, in the Breakthrough Experience program, what I'm doing is I'm taking all the self-judgments that we have and the judgments we have of other people. See, if we infatuate with somebody and put them on a pedestal, we're going to tend to inject their values. If we put them in our pit, we're going to tend to project our values onto them. And anytime you expect them to live in your values, you have futility. Anytime you expect to live in somebody else, you're going to have futility. You're going to have a limiting belief. You're going to doubt yourself, self-depreciation. You're going to question yourself. You're going to make, you know, on offload your, you're making decisions to somebody else again, and you're in a vicious cycle. But the second you do the Demartini method and dissolve the infatuation, dissolve the resentments, which you inject or project your values from, <clears throat> and go in and find out where you're proud or shamed as compensation for the resentments and infatuations and dissolve those. And you become authentic and love yourself and go back to your highest value, your beliefs and everything, they don't hold you back. Because now your belief is that I do what I say. I walk my talk. I'm doing what I love. I'm loving what I'm doing. I'm inspired by my mission. And all of a sudden, you don't have the beliefs. You build incremental momentum uh, that are, are building an accomplishment. You don't have these limiting beliefs there all of a sudden. That's why it's so important to prioritize your life. That's why in the Breakthrough Experience, I spend so much time on values and how what values are and how they function and how to make your your perception decisions and actions according to what's really valuable to you and not subordinate and not subordinate and and listen to other people and be trying to please everybody around you or trying to trying to control everybody around you whenever we put people in our heart and we love them and have equanimity within us we're not proud or shamed we're authentic and we're loving somebody else and have an equity with them, we liberate ourselves from a lot of emotional baggage. So that's why those two things are in the breakthrough experience, teaching you how to identify your values and live accordingly. And every time you live by your highest values, you decrease the probability of having emotional baggage that you need to clear. And then so I have the Demartini method for clearing out the emotional baggage and bringing you back down to your 
your higher level brain function. See, when you're living by your highest values, your blood glucose and oxygen goes into the forebrain, the executive center, and you re-empower your life. And you start making wise decisions as an executive and you become a leader and you end up having self-worth and you end up having a greater space and time horizons. But if you don't and you're not clearing out the baggage and living by lower, you know, emotional volatilities all the time and putting out fires and doing low priority things, you're designed to have those belief systems accumulate that limit and then are holding you back. The holding you back is actually guiding you back to what is untrue, what's true and what's on track for you. But they're misinterpreted. In the breakthrough experience, I show you how to take those beliefs and I show you how to dissolve the perceptions they're holding you back and turn them into something that's, that's an opportunity. If you use it as a feedback, in order if you go out and you uh, touch a fire and it burns, your, your brain and body says, okay, wait a minute, it gives you reflexes to uphold your hand back. And the same thing, when you're doing something in your life, you create symptoms in your life to hold, to, to guide you and give you feedback to let you know that's not what's working. And so in the breakthrough experience, I teach people how to live by their highest values. So they're less likely to be in their amygdala and more likely to be objective and set real goals. And I teach them how to do the Demartini method on how to dissolve all the baggage that emerges and how to interpret it in such a way that you extract meaning out of your existence and out of those events. So you're not carrying around baggage all your life. You can carry around baggage in your subconscious mind on all the things you haven't loved, or you can carry it around in your superconscious mind and be inspired and do what you love. And that's why I tell people to come to the Breakthrough Experience to help people go through and learn the method, the Demartini method, which is a series of questions that methodically hold you accountable to see what you've been unconscious of, to take people off pedestals, to take people out of pits, to take yourself off pedestals and out of pits, and to put yourself in your heart and put other people in your heart so you can love people, where there's no noise in the brain, where you're grateful for your life. So you can empower the brain. Your brain, when you're living by your highest values, has less noise. The, the higher signals from the spontaneous potentials in the brain come through, and you're inspired, and you're, you're intrinsically driven. You're not you know, running your life by other people's expectations and opportunities taking advantage of you. And if all of a sudden you're living that way, you're more inspired by your life. But if you're sitting there going into your amygdala and living by lower values, you're automatically designed to create chaos. You can either see the hidden order by living by your highest values or you can live in chaos. And the chaos is a feedback of missing information to try to get you back to what's on track. Anytime you go from order to disorder and you go into the amygdala and you go into that, you're uncertain and you have missing information, you have chaos and you have disorder. And that disorder is a feedback to let you know, hey, this is not my path. I'm in my karmic wheel, as the Buddhist says, instead of my dharmic path. And so you just keep having all this volatility and emotions that weigh you down. So your noise in your brain is all that. But a clear consciousness is when you live by priority and you do the Demartini method. It clears out the baggage and clears out the noise and allow a clear mind for a moment. The same thing in your business, as long as you put people on pedestals and minimize yourself, you'll sacrifice your profits. And if you go and put them down and exaggerate yourself, you won't make any profits because nature's trying to get you in a state of equanimity and equity, trying to have sustainable fair exchange in business. So again, if you live by your highest values where you're more objective and more balanced, you end up with more profits in business. And if you do the Demartini method and clear out the baggage and appreciate people for who they are and not exaggerate and minimize them, it helps your business. The same things when it comes to finances. As Warren Buffett says, if you can't manage your emotions, don't expect to manage your, your life. Don't expect to manage money. So what happens is if you basically dissolve all the emotional baggage and allow yourself to be poised and present and clear and certain and prioritize and purposeful, you maximize your money and your self-worth goes up. And if your self-worth goes up, you're more likely to want to have fair exchange and value yourself and save a portion of it. So your money works for you instead of it working for you. You're working for your money all your life. The same thing in relationships. You know, everybody wants to be loved and appreciated for who they are. They don't want to be put on pedestals or pits. They can't live up to those. And they don't want to be, you know, negated or, or exaggerated. They just want to be loved for who they are. Well, doing the Demartini method in the breakthrough experience helps you do that. I guarantee if you do the method and thoroughly do it on somebody, you're going to have tears of gratitude for the individual that you may be judging. You can transform any judgment. I haven't seen anything that the mortal body can experience of judgment that you can't love with your own real soul. 
the state of unconditional love within you, the authentic self is able to do that. That's why I teach people the breakthrough experience and the Demartini method for that. And in socially, if you're living by your highest values, you're automatically waking up your leadership skills. So if you want to develop your leadership, if you want to have more love and appreciation, if you want to have more wealth, if you want to go and have more stability and sustainability in your business, you want to have less noise in the brain. And if you want to have more vitality, because a lot of the things that rob people of vitality are all those emotions that keep distracting us, that cause distress and that take up a lot of energy. Your brain is needs the most amount of energy and it gets it needs blue, blood, blood glucose and energy. When you live by your highest priority, it gets it. And it calms down the, the autonomic dysregulation distresses that we have in life. So you get more vitality, more, more inspiration. And you're, you're inspired by doing that. Whenever you're living by your highest values, you're inspired by your life. You're more grateful. So if you want to be more grateful, you want to have a more vital body, a more balanced physiology, less symptoms, and all the other things I was talking about. That's why I teach the breakthrough experience, to teach you the Demartini method and to get you back on track with the highest values. That's just some of the basics that I cover in the breakthrough experience because I want people to, to master their life. And you're not going to master your life being caught in traps and limited beliefs and the beliefs that are basically holding you back. But the holding you back are actually holding your false persona back and try to get you onto your true self. The false personas and masks we wear are what's being held back, but you're attached to those personas. And I have people coming to me in the breakthrough experience and they, they say, I want to do something. They don't want it. They're not doing it. And I go, why are you not doing it? It's very simple. It's because what you say you want to do is not really important enough to do it. You have unconsciously more drawbacks and benefits doing it or you'd be doing it. And that's primarily because of the conflict you have between the injected values or projected values in your real hierarchy of values. So let me help you transform and transcend those limited beliefs, if you want to call it that, or those beliefs that are, you think are holding you back and transform your perception and show you how to turn them on the way into from in the way. I show you how what they mean. It's not really that difficult when you actually know how to ask the right questions, which I teach you in the program. You can all of a sudden extract meaning out of your existence and find out the blessings that are going on in your life that you haven't been able to see before. So if you'd like to do that, come and join me at the Breakthrough Experience. I want to show you how to empower all those areas of life and how to take the beliefs and make them, I believe that I'm capable of doing something extraordinary on planet Earth, and then go do it. Instead of sitting there and having the doubts and uncertainties and the self-depreciations that most people live with. A quiet of life desperation, as Thoreau would say. Instead of a life of inspiration, which I'm trying to teach you. So come to the Breakthrough Experience and let me help you learn these tools that have helped me and helped thousands of other people do extraordinary things with their life and be able to love their life again. So they're not weighed down that uh, with some sort of belief that's holding them back, at least in their perception, and show them how to turn whatever's in the way to on the way. I'm absolutely certain that what you'll learn there at the end of the program, I ask people every week, how many of you have learned something this weekend? You could have gone your entire life and not learned if you hadn't been here and every hand goes up. If you'd like to learn something novel, something original, something I've been working on for 50 years of research on human behavior, come to the Breakthrough Experience and let me help you break through those perceptions and belief systems that you think are holding you back. Because I can show you how to turn those into opportunities and fuel yourself to do something more extraordinary with your life. Join me at the Breakthrough Experience so I can teach you these principles that have helped me achieve what I've set out to do in my life. I set out to travel the world and to teach and I get to, to do it every day and get handsomely paid and beautifully paid to do something I love to do. If that's something inspiring to you, sign up now and join me. I'm absolutely certain it can, what you'll learn there, you'll have for the rest of your life, you'll be able to use it to transform whatever you think is in the way to on the way.